Good morning, this is Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Thanks so much for watching on Above Life channel on YouTube if you're looking to find more of my content. I share also on Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube. All right, so this morning I'm gonna share, I, I know this is a video and sometimes Sunday Morning Coffee most of the time it's just an audio because it's really easy for me just to sit out on the back deck and record an audio for you and I thought, you know what, let's do a video today because I really wanted to show you my coffee mug. Do you see that? Cheetahs. Cheetah vibes. Okay, so I picked up this coffee mug, gosh, like a year and a half or so ago after I read this book called Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Some of you might be familiar with the book Untamed by Glennon Doyle. There's a lot out now about it, a lot of like publicity now, like a year later and that kind of thing about the book. But um, in the book, she makes a reference to the cheetah and compares this feeling of who are you born to be, you know, and, and how we tame ourselves or condition ourselves as we grow. And especially it's written from the woman's perspective. And you know that my work is to inspire the spirit and fill you with hope, but I have a passion to work with women and help to women to be who we are created to be, which is the, the foundation of my coaching work as an intuitive coach. And so this mug I wanted to share with you today, the cheetah. I'm also gonna make mention that when you are drawn to Here's a little tangent. You know that's what happens on Sunday morning coffee. When you are drawn to animals in particular, like on my recent trip um, to Disney World and I stayed at a resort hotel that had a savanna, like with animals, I was so drawn to the giraffes and the zebras. Just love them. But it can be more simple like that. You can walk into a store and see some cute stuffed animals and be drawn to that that turtle stuffed animal. Or maybe you could be out on a walk in nature and a crow can kind of come and be kind of your walking companion. I actually had a client just recently that shared with me that she's going through a lot. Like she's really working on her inner work and working on her own healing <clears throat> and really connecting deeper with her intuition. And, oh, excuse me, I'm gonna have to <clears throat> clear my throat. Oh, hello, throat chakra, speak your truth, Bridget. Speak your truth, throat chakra. She shared with me that, and she literally sent me a picture of this because she's like, you're not gonna believe this, even after the session, this happened. But she has a little, like a cardinal that kind of bops along on this little path and it follows her, a cardinal. Okay, a cardinal, yes, symbol of afterlife communication. Yes, but also a symbol of mystic. It's like a portal. It's like a protection energy, a red rich root chakra energy, and a. it's safe for you to be yourself, to be your incredible intuitive and psychic self, basically for her. It's safe for you to be in your power. Your spirit is not gonna overpower you. Everyone is so afraid of that because the ego seems like it and the mind is so in charging and control of our lives that when the spirit gains its, its, its uh, essence and awareness of the freedom that it has to really be in full expression, the mind is very threatened and the solar plexus or the spirit chakra, spirit within us, like kind of tries to dim down so that there's not this like battle with the brain because nobody wants to lose a battle to your mind, right? Nobody wants to lose your mind. Mm -mm. So <clears throat> very real fears, people. These are very real fears as you open on your intuitive path. And so she was showing me, um, she actually texted me after session this picture of this little cardinal bopping along, like walking along, kind of hopping along the path next to her. I, I was like, are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me? Because she was telling me I've been out on this walking path and this cardinal comes and like is kind of with me for for a chunk of the path like it's almost like this like um guide or guardian for the path and oh hi nice to see you kind of bopping along it's not like a threatening thing like get away from here it's nothing like that it's very calming kind of comforting energy for her and i, I mean i just find that fascinating so animals that pop up whether it's a stuffed animal in a store or your favorite animal from childhood, you know, you collect those dolphins. 
um, those little statues and everything, or whether it's something like a crow or a cardinal that pops in and just shows up for you. Animals are messengers and they are guides. They give you information. So what I would suggest you do, and this works for everybody, anybody, just Google, 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 and look up what the meaning is of that animal. And the meaning will be many. There'll be lots of different takes on what that message could be, lots of different pieces of information about that particular animal. Go with your gut, your intuition, as to what your spirit isn't aligned with, with that particular message for that particular totem from that animal at that time. And that's it. So it does take trusting your intuition to know which phrase in that like five paragraph thing about that totem animal is really for you because it's not all yours. It's not all for you, not all for you at this time, but there's a particular poignant message. So this cheetah cup, and I have a little drink of my coffee this morning. Hmm. Yeah. Nice coffee. This cheetah mug gives me a bit of a boost in my spirit and reminds me of that conditioning or that unconditioning, like unconditional love, undoing some of the old belief patterns or systems that no longer serve me. And I invite you to do the same, to use these simple messages, these natural nature spirit guides and helpers to help you as well. Plus, it just makes me feel good, right? Positive messaging. My brain see this, sees this, my heart goes, oh, and my spirit's like, yeah, yeah, you're a GD cheetah. And a GD cheetah is the, you're a goddamn cheetah, which is a reference to that book, Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Hey, if you've read that book, go ahead and pop it below in the comments. Um, you can also Google or look up on the YouTubes some of the interviews with Glennon Doyle and the book. Like she's interviewed with multiple people to talk about the book and, and um, the messages of it and her personal stories about it. And very relatable, I think relatable, as far as some of our common themes of, of the, the patterns, maybe or beliefs, old beliefs that we might have about things. So pretty cool. All right, so. With that, for Sunday morning coffee today, I feel like, <sighs> I don't necessarily feel like a goddamn cheetah today. I do feel energy movement and moving, and <clears throat> that's because there's a lot of energy flowing and going. So you know if you watch my work on Fairy Grasshopper, YouTube channel, I've been talking a lot about empathy and being an empath and this over-processing of energy, which used to be kind of buzzwords like highly sensitive person or psychically sensitive or, oh, you're so sensitive, you wear your heart on your sleeve. Those kinds of things in the past. Well, now after we've been through this incredibly massive global health crisis trauma, we've literally had this trauma experience collectively, it has taken that concept of being so sensitive to a whole new level. And the energy of our mood is deeply impacting how we behave external. It impacts our actions. It's influencing not only our mood in, our, in the moment, but it's influencing how we are either continuing to do our self work or be in our awareness about beliefs that we want to change or things about ourselves that really aren't true, like the mind. Remember we mentioned the ego mind earlier. The mind has all these old kind of tapes and patterns and that's its job is to remind us of, of, of a structure in which to operate that's safe. Safe operating principles after all. Protocols have been designed over time, over your lifetime to keep you very safe. And that's the goal of your brain and it does a great job. And since we've been through this collective trauma, it is trauma and you know it because that word now trauma is becoming a big buzzword and super in your face all the time. Look at the stuff that Oprah is doing um, uh, with Bruce Perry, which interestingly, I gotta tell you something about that. So during the health crisis, way back in March of 2020, I actually was um, in a woman's group and 
it's based on trauma-informed care and with a lot of the people in the group being people who are you know works in, work in the social service fields and are therapists and psychologists and coaches and at that time then there was this opportunity to work in a structure of it's called natural lifemanship which with my coach at the time who's an amazing coach she um that was her foundation and her background so I got kind of curious about this natural lifemanship and it was based on trauma-informed care, which I was like, trauma? I haven't been through trauma. I haven't been through that. And she's like, um, we're redefining what trauma means. And so therefore, take a look at some of this stuff. So I started looking at Dr. Bruce Perry's work and in March 2020, I started looking at it. And then I joined um, a, an online um, learning group. Um, it's for like count, counselors and coaches and things like that for equine therapy, which is working with horses, which is beautiful, working with horses and counseling and therapy and amazing like behavioral. Oh gosh, it's just amazing. Just such a cool thing. I, I, I just was like, wow. Speaking of animals, horses, hello, intuition, freedom. Yeah, mm-hmm, so much there. And I took a online class during that time to learn about and understand what the body's response to trauma was and the, the structure that the mind creates to keep us safe and protected and how to recognize where I was at in the response scale and the four different levels of response. And it's, it's not just fight, flight, uh, or freeze, or fawn, which is some of you might recognize those four stages, fight, flight. That's a common one. Everybody kind of hears that in psychology stuff 101 or in high school psychology class. And freeze, we know that, like you just can't do anything, you're immobile, because it's just your whole body just shuts down or fawn, which is, which is, drum roll please, people pleasing. Does that sound familiar? Hmm? Empath? Does that sound familiar, sensitive person? People pleasing? Because that's a tool that we, you and I, both use to help manage the energy around us so the energy within us doesn't get disrupted. And the truth of the matter is, it's the energy within us that we have the most influence over, the most influence over. It doesn't feel like it, I know. I know it doesn't feel like it. Let, let me tell you this. I understand that it doesn't feel like you have influence over your own energy sometimes. I really know what that feels like, especially with the debilitating anxiety that I felt recently. There's a lot of big changes going on in our lives, in my personal life, and my family, and it just, rocks me to my core it just is when it has to do with my kids and I'm so worried and I'm like oh my gosh I, I don't know what to do what can I do I can't I'm too far away how do I I mean I just it's like this trauma response crisis response I'm getting ready always hyper vigilant for the next crisis and if I calm down too much or let myself relax too much then sure enough I'm going to get a text or a phone call and there's going to I'm going to have to be on I'm going to have to respond and so I'm constantly in a state of readiness. So too are you, all of us. We have, through this collective trauma, we have experienced a huge, massive trauma, massive change forced upon us without, I mean, pushing us to our very core of our health. Like in the very beginning, think about the early stages of the pandemic and how we had to be inside because nobody knew anything for sure. And then it was like, who do we believe? And what do we do? And oh my gosh, you know, quick, go buy a bunch of toilet paper. because this is gonna be a really crappy experience. You know, I mean, really, there is such a incredible amount of loss of control and unknown, and we don't like that. The brain hates unknown, and it brings back our system structure of preparing for trauma, the next thing, the trauma unit, we're gonna do some triage here, we gotta be ready, because we don't know what's gonna happen. It's like that, like you're a rescuer, first responder, it literally, feels like that. And that energy, although we can kind of loosen up and relax a little bit and feel a little more confident in our health choices now as individuals and, and kind of feel a little more powerful that way, like, okay, I'm good, I feel good, I feel comfortable, now I can go and do these things, etc. 
although we feel that, we still there still is this right below the surface of the, the middle of the heart space, right into that belly space, solar plexus, your spirit, your intuition. That place is incredibly impacted by what is going on next. Now, the next phase, as I'm recording this in the, the late spring of 2021, we are heading into the summer of 2021. And so there's this feeling of freedom and expression and expansiveness and the underlying energy of fear is there. And the mind is utilizing the old structures of our old tra traumatic responses to keep us safe and traumatic. If you just say, instead of trauma, you can call it stress response. That, and I learned about all this stuff. I can't, it's so crazy to me to believe, to realize that I really dug deep in and took like this intellectual, <laughs> deep material learning for a, like two months. I was in this intensive, like immersion, immersion <laughs> experience and reading stuff and trying stuff. And I mean, just, oh my gosh, it was just amazing. And now, right now, Oprah has this book about what happened to you, and I haven't read it, but it's all Dr. Perry's work, so it's all related to this. So, so you see, there is intellectual information that you can grab from this if you want that, and to understand at least what's going on, but the biggest takeaway is within ourselves, okay? Your spirit now is like trying to negotiate with this brain going into the trauma unit, and it's like, trying to tell the brain, lower the fear threshold, because right now, if we keep the fear high, the fear will manifest in our body. We'll get disease, we'll get um, um, discomfort in our body, we'll abandon our body a little bit, which means we'll stop taking care of it, we'll, be, um, we'll have higher expectations of our body, and we'll have to use alternative methods that are not so healthy for our body to keep it going, like medications that maybe usually we wouldn't necessarily take, but hey, I just need this, I need this, this right now so that I can get through this, whether it's like headache medicine or prescription medicine or stomach medicine, like acid medicine, like Tums or those kinds of things. If you notice yourself taking more of that kind of stuff, it's because the physical manifestation of fear is happening in your belly, in your gut, which is where your intuition is and your soul is. And your soul is like, hey, we got to tamp down the fear. We're not going to control the fear. We're going to we're going to sympathize with it. We're going to love it. We're going to uncondition the fear to let the fear exist and coexist peacefully. And we can do that within ourselves. We can't do that externally with our family, with our work, with our communities, with our countries. We can't externally control stuff, but we can have a sense of normalcy and control if you choose to use that word or management within ourselves. And I am working on that myself. And I'm telling you, it's a process. It's a process. And I have had too much of the coffee. I know that. I do that. When I am like feeling like I need to do something or I want to do something or I want to feel better, usually if I feel kind of a low energy and I want to feel better, I want to get motivated, I'll have another cup of caffeine and it's high octane now, you guys. This is not organic coffee. Bridget is not drinking organic coffee, which is what I did two years ago. Uh-uh. This is high octane stuff. This is like Nespresso stuff. I will link that below, actually. I have this cool new Nespresso machine that I bought during the pandemic that has been so fun to, to work with and, and play with. And it will be totally fine if I just did one a day or one every other day. But if I'm doing two a day, that's too much for Bridget. And I know it and it amplifies the energy inside my body and it matches with the trauma anxiousness, the get ready, be ready, vigilant energy. And that's what the high octane caffeine does. That's what sugar also does too, by the way, it puts you in a good mood for a temporary moment in time. And then later for me, like my knee hurts because the inflammation and it makes me feel crappy and my body will put it in little pockets in my body so I notice it like in my shoulder or my knee so that I can't exercise, walk, do yoga easily or readily because it reminds me, hey, you intentionally, you're doing some Band-Aid stuff and you're not addressing the real, the real issue. You know, your health really does matter. And that's about energy. Energy really does matter, okay? 
So you are not crazy. You might feel crazy. I totally feel crazy when I have anxiety going down and I can't stop it and it's burning me. Like it feels like not heartburn, but gut burn. Like I literally described this to my husband. We had this really stressful thing happen last week. I literally describe it as like, it's like my guts are ripped wide open and it's on fire. Everything is on fire and I can't, there's nothing I can do about it. Like I'm, I just have to be there and watch the, everything burn. And then my heart feels like, I need to be free, I need to be free, what can I do, what can I do, I need to be free, just get me freedom, I have to breathe, I have to breathe, is what my heart says and my intuition, my gut, my solar plexus, my sacral chakra, my womb space too, but really my solar plexus, so my spirit in the belly is like, release, you gotta clear this now, right now. And so the energy as of late externally has been Intense in a word, intense, dramatic. Yeah, yes, it has. There's nothing wrong with you when you feel that. We just had a really big full moon, lunar eclipse energy. We have a, a Mercury retrograde if you follow astrology at all. I do not, like, here's the thing just because I'm a psychic, a medium, and I do intuitive coaching work, I do not know about astrology. I don't know about tar tarot either. I don't really, I'm not a fan of specific. Things like that, for me, like it's not a match for me. I shouldn't say I'm not a fan. I just don't like I hate them. It's just, it's not a match for me. So it's fine, whatever, it's not my language. But astrology is curious to me and interesting. And yet I'm not interested in learning about it. I just feel and sense the energy. So when I hear, hey, there's a Mercury retrograde coming up, I'm like, oh, I get it. Plus those terms, Mercury retrograde has kind of eked into mainstream society so that we can freak out about psychic intangible stuff that we really have no concept of, or we think we have no concept of. Our brain's like, oh, that's why. Oh, another excuse for something. Okay, for us to feel crazy. Oh, that's why. But the retrograde energy is not bad at all. It's just, it serves a purpose. You just gotta roll with it, use it. Like when something shows up, use it, repurpose it, use it for your good, you know? So don't freak out about the full moon. Don't freak out about the retrograde. Don't freak out about the transition into a new season. All these endings are happening at the same time with additional energy of uh, purging, of release, release, release. And it's not because you've done anything wrong. It's not because you're bad. It's not because you have bad habits. That's not, even, that's not why. You don't have to release or clear stuff or work with energy because there's something wrong with you and you're innately trying to fix yourself. That's not, that's not, that's not true. That's what the mind structures and the old patterns might say, like, um, like a limited, limited beliefs, for example, like about therapy or counseling. Like my mom, there's no way my parents' generation would ever go to counseling. And you and I both know they needed it and still need it probably today, right? But there's like super not into going to that at all. And because it says something about them, like they're crazy, they must be crazy, they're going to a counselor. Oh, but no, and they're, but in the meantime, they're having cocktails at 10 a.m., you know, not, you know, for example, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know if anybody does that, but I'm sure that they do and they just don't say anything. They're self-medicating, you know? They're doing the best they can, but they're self-medicating. And so therefore then, more problems, right? So limiting belief system is, well, if you go to therapy, there's something wrong with you. But if you don't, then there's nothing wrong. So it's okay to have cocktails at 10 a.m. and that's totally normal for who? I don't know. So my point is limited beliefs, the old structure is trying to keep you safe. Now it's like, no, use the resources that are available to you. Use counseling, use your licensed clinical social worker, use your employee assistance program, use the 1-800 numbers, use them. Because your brain needs some help right now so that you, then you and your spirit can focus on managing the energy within you because you're beautiful. Your energy, your spiritual being and the energy being that you are is so awesome, you guys. It's gorgeous. I can feel it and I can see it and I can sense it. And I know this within myself too. And this is why I'm sharing this with you today on Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. I know this is a bit of an unusual episode and I'm glad because this is an unusual time. We've covered a lot of different topics from animals to a great book to limiting beliefs in the mind, to empath and highly sensitive people, to the current energy that's going on right now just a wee bit. I'll have to do some more videos about that, probably posting on my fairy grasshopper about the current energy and like retrograde stuff and what does that mean, so.
Hey, it's been nice talking with you today. Thanks for starting your day with me. I appreciate you. Or if it's your evening, hey, thanks for wrapping out the day with me. I appreciate you. I'm Bridget, as always. I hope that I hope to inspire your spirit today to fill you with some hope. This is your life after all, it's yours. No more excuses, you've got to live it. And you deserve to live it in the best way that you can. Thanks for being here.